This is a reading from the Notebooks by Maria Voltorta, 1943, October 29th. Jesus says, When I have Zephaniah say that I will carry off everything from the earth, I have him prophesy what will happen the day before the eve of the last time. What I later announced, concealed under the description of the ruin of the temple and of Jerusalem, of the destruction of the world, and what the Beloved One prophesied in his apocalypse. The voices succeed each other. Indeed, I can say that, as in a, sac a sacred edifice raised up to witness the glory of the Lord, the voices rise from pinnacle to pinnacle, from prophet to prophet, preceding Christ, up to the greatest peak upon which the Word speaks during his life as a man, and then descend from pinnacle to pinnacle over the centuries through the mouths of the prophets following Christ. It is like a concert which sings the praises, dictates, and glories of the Lord, and it shall last until the moment when the angelical trumpets shall assemble the dead in graves, and the dead in spirit, the living on earth, and the living in heaven, so that they will prostrate themselves before the visible glory of the Lord, and hear the word of God, that word whom numberless ones have rejected, and neglected, disobeyed, mocked, and disparaged, that word who came, light into the world, in whom the world did not want to receive, preferring the darkness. I am the summit of God's edifice. There cannot be a word higher and truer than mine, but my spirit is in the mouths of the lesser words. For everything which speaks of what is God's is a word inspired by God. Famine and the mortality of epidemics shall be one of the precursory signs of my second coming. Punishments created to punish you, and call you back to God with their painful power, shall affect one of the selections between the children of God and of Satan. Famine produced by plundering and accursed wars, wanted without the justification of the independence of nations, but only out of the ferocity of power and the pride of demons in the guise of men, produced by the arresting, through God's will, of the cosmic laws, whereby the cold shall be harsh and protracted, whereby heat shall be seething and not mitigated by rains, whereby the seasons shall be reversed, and you shall have drought in the rainy seasons, and rains in the time of the ripening of the harvests, whereby, deceived by sudden warmth or unaccustomed freshness, plants shall bloom out of season, and, after having already generated, the trees shall be covered with new, useless flowers, extenuating the plant without fruit, for all disorder is harmful, and leads to death. Remember this, O men, hunger shall be cruel shall cruelly torment this arrogant race, hostile to God. The animals, deprived of hay and fodder, of grains and seeds, shall die of hunger, and, because of man's hunger, be destroyed without giving them time to procreate. Birds of the sky and fish of the waters, herds and flocks shall be attacked on all sides, to give your bellies the food which the earth shall not produce for you any longer, except meagerly. The forms of mortality created by wars and pestilences, by earthquakes and storms, shall hurl into the next life the good and the wicked, the former for your punishment, for, deprived of the best, you shall grow worse and worse, the latter for their punishment, for they shall have hell as their dwelling before the anticipated hour. The victim prepared by the Lord to purify the altar of the earth, profaned by the sins of idolatry, lust, hatred, and pride, shall be you, men, thousands and tens of thousands, whom shall perish under the sharp scythe of the divine thunderbolts. Like grass mown down in a meadow in April, you shall fall upon each other, the holy flowers mixed with the poisonous ones, the soft st steels mixed with the sharp brambles. The hands of my angels shall select and separate the blessed from the accursed, taking the former to heaven and leaving the latter to the tridents of the demons for the pasturage of hell. Being kings or beggars, learned or ignorant, young or old, warriors or priests, shall not constitute a difference or bulwark against death. There shall be punishment, and a tremendous one. The eye of God shall choose those destined by removing the lights, so that they will not have to suffer any longer from the haze created by men joined to Satan, removing the darkness generating darkness, because it is possessed by the father of darkness, Satan. The eye of God, which penetrates into palaces, churches, 
and consciences, and there is no barrier or hypocrisy which keeps it from seeing, shall scrutinize within the church the present Jerusalem, and scrutinize within souls and write the individual decree for the indolent, the indifferent, the lukewarm, the rebellious, the betrayers, the killers of the spirit, and the deicides. No, do not think that God will do you neither good nor harm for your works. I swear to you, I swear to myself, I swear by my justice, I swear with a triple oath, I will do good to you for the good you do, and harm for the evil done by you. If the uncleanness of the flesh and of your life as beasts forms a scale over the eyes of your souls to keep them from seeing God, nothing forms a veil for God. I will make my hand weigh heavily upon those who delight in being in the slime, for they make the slime of sin into the food preferred by their impure hunger. The day is approaching, children, who have denied the Father. The time of the earth is at once long and brief. Wasn't it yesterday that you enjoyed an honest well-being provided by peace and by the pacific works producing bread and labor? Wasn't it yesterday, O you that live in this tremendous hour, that you enjoyed the bliss of the family, not dismembered and destroyed, the bliss of children around the father's dinner table, of the marriage bed, the husband alongside the wife, of the father bending over the heads of his children as a teacher and friend, and now? Where is all of this? Swift as a bird flying to distant shores, that time has passed. It was yesterday. Now you turn and see that a sum of days with which horror multiplies with its bloody intensity separates you therefrom. You take refuge in memory, but heaps of ruin and rows of tombs destroy the sweetness of your memory with the reality of the present. O oh, men, men who insult God with the voices of the mouth and heart, believing it is listed for you to do so, hear men, the voice of God, agonized and agonizing, which already thunders over the world because of, it is of no benefit to speak to you through the mouths of his servants and friends, and which announces to you his wrath, and which still calls you, for it suffers over punishing you. Before the blindness of your spirits is complete, come to the doctor and the light. Before the blood is so abundant as to become a lake of death, come to the source of life. Gather together your wretched capacities for love, and direct them towards God. Love will forgive you on account of those crumbs of love, the leftovers of the robberies of the flesh and of Satan, which you offer to him. To God the first fruits and the totality of goods should be given. But, since you have been unable to do this, O sons and daughters who have cost me my life, give to the great, merciful, and powerful Lord what still remains in you. In your spiritual poverty, not evangelical, but human poverty, Rest the last petiole from your hearts, deny that remainder to the flesh, and give it to me. I know that the sacrifice of life costs one of my beloved, less, for love inebriates him, than the sacrifice of a kiss costs you, and for your effort disproportionate to the offer, I will give you a reward disproportionate to the gift. I will give it to you, provided you come. Whoever worked well in the final hour shall be admitted into the kingdom, like the one who guided the plough until falling upon it, from dawn to dusk arriving in haste. You shall not regret having a different dwelling, dwelling in heaven. There the baseness of human envies does not exist. But conquer this heaven which I created for you, and which I opened to you with my death on the cross. Come to the Lord before the Lord comes upon you with his majesty as a judge. In regard to you, my beloved ones, remain on the way you have chosen. Whirlwinds and storms cannot make you lose the goal which I am, with my heart open to receive you with the most intense kiss of love. Let kingdoms and peoples fall, and what, what now thinks it is powerful becomes ash and ruin. What now thinks it is licit to dictate decisions and doctrines becomes dust, fractured by the will and law of God. In my brief reign over the world, it shall be I that reign, I, the remnants of, I and the remnants of my people, that is, the true faithful, those who have not denied Christ and covered the sign of Christ with the tiara of Satan. Then the deceitful deities of excessive power and the obscene doctrines denying God, the Almighty Lord, shall fall. My church, before the world's hour ceases, shall have her shining triumph. Nothing is different in the life of the mystical body from what was in the life of Christ. There shall be Hosanna on the eve of the Passion. The Hosanna, when the peoples, caught by the fascination of the divinity, shall bend their knee to the Lord. 
Then the passion of my militant church shall come, and finally the glory of the eternal resurrection in heaven. O blessedness of that day, on which the deceits, acts of revenge, and struggles of Satan and of the flesh shall be over forever. My church shall then be made up of true Christians. Then, on the next to last day, a few, as at the beginning, but holy as at the beginning. She shall end in holiness as she began in holiness. The liars, betrayers, and idolaters shall remain outside. Those who on the final day imitate Judas and sell their souls to Satan, harming the mystical body of Christ, in them the beast will have his deputies for his last war. And woe to those in Jerusalem in the last times who become guilty of such a sin. Woe to those who exploit their function therein for human gain. Woe to those who let their brothers and sisters perish and neglect making the word I have entrusted to them bread for the souls hungry for God. Woe! I will not distinguish between those openly denying God and those denying him with their works. And in truth I tell you, with the sorrow of the supreme founder, that in the final hour three-fourths of my church will deny me, and I will have to cut them away from the trunk as dead branches, corrupted by an unclean fever. But you that remain in me, hear Christ's promise. Wait for me faithfully and longingly, and I will come to you with all my gifts, with the gift of gifts, myself. I will come to redeem and to provide care. I will come to illuminate the darkness, to overcome it and set it to flight. I will come to teach men to love and worship the eternal God, the Most High Lord, the Holy Christ, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I will come to bring you not the peace of this world, the eternal destroyer of peace, but the peace of the undying kingdom. Exult, O my faithful servants. The mouth that does not lie tells you this. You will no longer have to fear any evil, because I will put an end to the time of evil. I will hasten this end out of mercy on my blessed ones. O you, my beloved, at present, exult above all. For you, the advent of Christ and his glorious embrace will be even more solicitous. For you, the gates of the city of God are already opening, and your Savior is coming out to meet you and give you true life. A little longer, and I will come for you. As with Lazarus, my friend, I will call you one by one. Come out, out of this earthly life, which is a tomb for the spirit imprisoned in the flesh. Out, into the life and freedom of heaven. Call me with your faithful love. Let it be the blaze which melts the chains of flesh and gives the spirit the freedom to come quickly to me. Utter the most beautiful cry written by man. Come, Lord Jesus.